so I think we'd better get cooking and show these guys up here how far you've come in this competition. You've got two hours to knock our socks off and... It's on Come on, guys. Today's challenge is to cook a dish for the people we love. Mum. Yeah. We've got two hours to do it. The judges will be looking for the one top dish. And the maker of that gets to go home for a night. You can do it, Mum. You know, you always think that your family's here right through the competition watching on, and um, today they really are, which is really nice. Alana, how are you going? I'm good, thanks, George. Very happy. Uh, you yeah. can look at you. What's the dish? It's um, Rob loves crepes with lemon and sugar. So what I'm doing is my Master Chef version of that. So it's like a, it's going to be a crepe stack with lemon curd, some raspberries. I'm doing a chestnut and almond yak ice cream to go with it as oh, well. Yum. Yeah. So I brought a couple of little gifts to help you today. <laughs> what, what is that? What we've got here is uh, a couple of photos of. Uh, our little furry friends, they're yes. our children, Miller and Belle. Her Geelong cat oh. scarf. <laughs> Seeing the photos and the scarf are little reminders of our life back home and it even just boosts my spirits even more. It smells so good down here though, I want to hang around. <laughs> you can try it later. Excellent. Crepe mixture needs to be a really thin batter so that it spreads out in the pan evenly when it cooks. I've got a massive task ahead of me. I have to make 10 crepe stacks, so I have a lot of crepes that I need to make. I need to get two pans on and making two at a time. <laughs> Can you come and do this for me? This is why you have exactly. a husband, Alana. Husband's used... job's never you done. Better, oh. You better be able to open it. Yeah. Do you need Gary? Oh, oh, well boy. done, well done, Rob. Mum, yeah. you've got an hour and five minutes. Thanks, buddy. Um, so, at the moment, I'm just making my crepes. I've got my ice cream on, my lemon curds in the fridge. I'm also making the little puree that will swirl through the ice cream at the end. And I have to make my meringue at probably in another half an hour or so. Listen, everybody, the kids have got something to tell you. <laughs> yeah! Rob's tasting the crepes with some lemon and sugar on them. Oh, yeah, here we go. It gives me the okay that they're perfect. All right, you're coming home with me. You're coming home with me. So, that's a bit of a relief. The experienced taste tester has given me the, the thumbs up on it. I'm just um, whisking in a little bit of creme fraiche. Because the actual crepe stack itself is going to be quite sweet, I wanted to make the ice cream quite savoury. You want to take that up? There we go. It's vanilla ice cream. I've got a round cookie cutter to cut into all these crepes that I've made. I can cut four smaller crepes out of them, which is the size of what my stack's going to be. I've got 10 crepe stacks I need to assemble. I need to get started, otherwise I'm going to run out of time. Well, Rob tried one. He seemed happy. But you know what I noticed Alana did? Well, she cooked them in what was supposed to be a nut brown butter, but it looked way too dark for me. And you know what happens? It stains the pancake, and then that little burny taste comes through. Not sure if I like that, as she got it right. Do you know a better way of doing yep, this? Yeah, you just pipe, put the next one in. Oh, OK. Do you know what I mean? To finish off the crepe stack, I pipe the Italian meringue on the top in a swirl and then blowtorch the top of it. Ding, ding, ding! It's nearly dinner time. Five minutes to go. You have ten seconds to go. Nine, eight, seven, seven six, six, five, four, four three, three, two, two one. That's, that's it. it. Time's up. Thanks for cheering me on. Um, oh. Wow. Yeah. Um, time to get Alana's dish. 
A crepe stack filled with lemon curd, raspberries and chestnut and armagnac ice cream. Here we go. Rob, what do you think? <sighs> it's hard to say, wow. It's exquisite. So tangy. You like it? Love it. I can't pull that out every night after dinner. <laughs> oh, what, do you, what do you mean? I thought this was the standard now. <laughs> Your mind, how it thinks, just intrigues me how you've come so far in this competition, how you plated it up. That beautiful little scoop of ice cream, little crumble, those little beautiful flowers. This is spectacular cooking. Thank you. This is really spectacular. It's a very clever dish. You've got so much going on in the plate, but everything's working together. It's a bit like an orchestra playing the same tune. Everyone's reading from the same sheet music, and that's a great dish. And I think maybe, maybe the best dish you've cooked so far. I feel like I'm just that little bit closer to finally winning an individual challenge. This one is a little favourite of mine. It's a lemon souffle, but with a little twist. We're going to make it like a crumble, so it's like a lemon tart, but a souffle. And we're going to serve that with lemon curd ice cream. All right, so we'll kick off. We've got one egg and one yolk into a mixer. And we're going to start whisking that. So put that on high. In a saucepan, 185 mils of milk and a little uh, vanilla pod. Into that milk, two lemons, just zest. That'll come up to the boil. So what we're looking for here is just a bit of aeration before I chuck in some of that sugar. We've got 75 grams of sugar. So we'll let that go for another 30 seconds. Now, these are the moulds I'm going to use. And what I've done is I've just put one thin layer of butter, all right? All I'm going to do on this second layer is just to go straight up, like that, so it's really, really even. So, sugar in. So what I'm doing is just rolling the sugar around and just making sure, as I'm looking at it, that it's well covered, there's no gaps. So I can't see the actual tin of the pot. So that's the sugar. So all I'm going to do now is just slow it down and then 50 grams of sifted flour. And then this. So 185 mils of that milk, all right? Next step, back on the gas. Don't want it to drop in temperature too much. And then this will just start sitting back down and thickening it up. And at any stage where you think you can grab that vanilla pod, that can come out. And remember, you can use this again. So what's happening is it's turning back into that classic creme patissiere that you're familiar with. And what's going to go in it is just really a tablespoon of, of, of butter and six egg yolks. OK, so we're going to let that cool down. Amazing. Amazing, it's cool. Fluffy. Yeah, so you can dip your finger in it, it's OK. Thanks. Oh, my God, that is amazing. Next step, five egg whites. As it starts to aerate, sprinkle in the sugar. And you've got to think of the sugar as the stabiliser. And the more sugar you put in it, up to that limit where it actually knocks the hair out and becomes, you know, gooey, the more stable it becomes, the more shiny it becomes. And basically what I'm looking for is soft, ribbony peaks. OK. So lemon creme patissiere souffle basics. All of the basic in there, and then about half the volume of whites. And then you fold that into the mixture, OK? You see how light that is? Mm, it's amazing. All right. Next step, mixture in. So I'm filling these half full. And there's two things I've got here. One is a lemon curd. And the recipe's on the website. It's pretty easy. It's egg yolk, sugar, butter, lemon juice. All right, we're going to use that a little bit later for the souffle. And then this is just sable crumbs. Again, recipe on the website, very easy to make. It's a basic shortbread and cooked quite lightly, not, not too dark. So it's just started to take on that golden crumb. Just going to put a little bit in the middle. Don't have to do this. 
And would that stay crunchy once they come out? It'll be textural. It won't be super crunchy. And then I'm just going to put a tiny little bit of this curd in the middle. It's just to reinforce the flavour. Mixture in. So I'm, I'm not going to fill these right to the top because the higher it goes, it's not always the perfect result because then you'll find that they can break if you're not careful. Next, put them in the oven and check them in two to three minutes' time. All right, so 200 degrees, and now we've got to wait for a little while. Right, let's have a quick look at these. They're not fully cooked. They're not fully cooked, but I'm just going to do this. A little bit of the crumble on top. I'd love to taste one of those. So those souffles have been in for about, what, three or four minutes. And the whole idea is to get them on the rise. You know they're going in the right direction. You can have a little look at them. Taking them out of the oven for that little spell will not do them any harm at all. And then now they're going to be in the oven for another four minutes or so until they're popped up high enough for us to go, hallelujah, the souffles worked. Souffles are nearly ready. I'm going to grab the ice cream out of the freezer. Now, what I've made here is a basic vanilla ice cream. Mm -hmm. All right? And I've used the curd and I've piped the curd into the ice cream. Oh, yum. Good idea. Vanilla ice cream, that's just egg yolks, sugar and cream. Yep. Recipe's on the website. Oh! oh. Nice. <laughs> so... A uh, little bit of icing sugar. sugar. Oh! And uh, that is my lemon, lemon souffle with lemon curd ice cream. <laughs> Who wants to come up and taste? Hey. Oh. Pip, Nahab and Daniel. Up you come. All right, grab a spoon. What we can do is we can... You, you can put a little bit of curd in the middle, like that, and then what you do is... You take out a little portion like this, and then you get crusty and gooey <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> All right? My mouth is oh my god. Oh. Mm. Mm. Eliza. Yeah. Mm. That, that, is like so, that is so light. The dish you're going to cook today is. Oh my god. <laughs> It is. So I actually call that essence of a woman. I try to make it as beautiful as a woman. A frozen, isn't it parfait? Salted. And inside the pump, you got a rhubarb velvet, which is like a coolie, to give a bit of a freshness to the dessert. I want you to open your mind. From now on, you artist. Follow your own judgment. You know, the best thing about this dessert, not only does it look amazing, but it tastes absolutely incredible. So if nothing else today, if you learn the techniques and the balance of flavours in that dessert, gee, what a thing to learn. You have two hours to recreate that dish. Just enough time if everything goes to plan. Your two hours starts now. This parfait, it's got a praline base. It's also got egg yolks, some cream that needs to be whipped up. We also have sugar and honey that needs to be heated up with some gelatin, and that just holds that parfait together. There you go. It's very beautiful. Glossy. Beautiful. That's it. Yeah. That salt's good. Nice. I like it, yeah. The next thing for the parfait is I need to pipe them into their moulds. Mr Whippy. There's enough mixture for eight moulds, but we only need one perfect mould at the end. I'm going to do four because I need a couple of backups. How are you going? Pretty good, I think. You... <laughs> I'm just... Mixture? You know... Did you taste the mixture? Yeah. What do you think? Is that going to be okay with the, the sweetness of the crystallised valets? I think so, yeah. Yeah, it's got a... Do you try uh, your piece of the flowers with the cream? No. 
Please do so. These? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Why? To make sure it works. What are we trying works. to get right? What are we trying the to get salt right? Salt balance. Salt balance. And what's going to make this dessert? The salt. Yeah, absolutely. How's that? Do you taste the salt now? Slightly. Mm. Come on. Can't do anything now. Bow. Salt. Salt. A bit of salt on top. You can re you can redo it, mix it, and repipe yep. it if you have to. Done. You've got time, mate, but you've got to move. I need to re-salt my parfait mix according to Vincent, so I take it out of the bag and re-season it. Wasn't enough salt. You put a fair bit in there. No, but with the sugar, it just cancels each other out. I'm a bit worried. We're running out of time pretty quick. I don't want you to panic, but 30 minutes down, that parfait should be in the freezer. Vincent's getting worried. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Got to start moving, darling. Yeah. Once the parfait is salted correctly, I layer it with some crystallised violet and a little bit of freeze-dried rhubarb, then a bit more of the mix and so on until I fill the mould up. The next step is to make the chocolate transfer and that involves tempering chocolate and I've never done that before. I think it can be quite tough if you've never done it. It looks pretty hard to do. You need to melt dark chocolate halfway I take it off the heat and it looks half melted, so I start whisking. Come on, come on, come on. Yep, smooth it out. Just express yourself on the canvas, Bowie. It's like a flame. I'm trying to remember what Vincent's one looked like. I know his nozzle had a little hole in it, so it looked like a pump spray, and his hose was really thin and, and perfectly round. What do you think, guys? Yep, really good, Bozo. The next thing is the little pump which has a rhubarb velvet filled truffle inside. I start rolling it onto some cocoa and gold dust. There's only one more thing to do with the perfume bottle, which is the parfait, and that is to make it red. To make the perfume bottle red, you sit it in a great big pile of red granulated sugar and then you spray paint it with red cocoa butter. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> right, how do we do this? Just spray? Uh, Woo! It's fun spraying that parfait. <laughs> I feel like a bit of a graffiti artist, a bit naughty, but great outcome. Yes, it's nice. You should stop now. Yes, Thank well done, perfect amino. Well done. Uh -huh. Very nice amount. Thank you. Great work. ISO malt granules. What do they look like? Oh, that'll be it there. That's it there, yeah? What planet are ISO malt granules from? I've never heard of them, but it's dead easy. You put it in a saucepan, you put it on the heat, you watch it, it melts, and then you decide what colour you want it to be. You put some food colouring in it. Here we go. What a crazy thing. And then spread over silicon mat. It's got a bit of vodka and that just helps to react. And we just shape it however we want. Go, 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 go. Are you happy with that? Are you happy with your colour? I love the colour. Yes. It's like honey. Sweet like a woman. Well, oh, you're so romantic. <laughs> you're such a charm. I don't know, Dad. I don't know who's more charming. Yeah, it's like a charm battle going on here. I'm getting really artistic. You should get in touch with the artistic side, Andy. Seconds to go! Nerf, eight, set, six, five, four, three, two, one. Set me in, guys. All right, set me in. Amazing. Wrap it up there, mate. You pushed yourself on that one, yeah. didn't you? Yeah, I'm done. Are you? Yeah. That's a really good feeling, but I've still got butterflies all through me. I just, I don't know what's going to happen still. Have you got this sudden fear that maybe the reality of going home is what's going to happen at the end of today? 
I'm, I'm fearing the possibility of that, but at the same time, I'm wrapped with what I've done. Bo, you want to do some kind of flame, fire. What is behind that? What is the story behind that? I guess I lost my opportunity to become a firefighter. Um, and I told you guys that this morning, so I'll put that in there as well. Interesting. I like it, Bo. You better leave us now. We have to talk about your dish. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> How good is that? It's How amazing. good is that? Vincent, doing this in two hours, bottle. I'm very pleased with what I'm seeing. I think we need to taste. It looks good, but does it taste good? <laughs> hey, it looks great. OK, first. Let's taste. Vincent, you look happy. I am. <laughs> Crunch, salt, nothing to say, but wow. I'm really impressed with the chocolate. Great snap, great shine. And in terms of the texture and flavour of the parfait, there's plenty of crunch, there's a violets in there. Mm. I think he's nailed it. He has absolutely nailed it. It's a delicious dish. And who would have thought the guy that struggled to put a, a decent red wine sauce up with his beef right in the beginning is now pulling off desserts like that. My feeling is in the future, Bo needs to hang out more with Julia and Kylie. Yeah. A little bit less with Ben and Andy, because he is no longer in the blokey beefy gang. He's solidly in the I can nail tricky dessert gang, because that's that's brilliant stuff. <laughs>